Welcome back to the newspaper review and thank you for staying tuned. Now we're joined virtually um, with our guest this morning, Ayo Emakiome. Thank you for joining us on the newspaper review today. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Thank you. I'd like to ask first things first, your experience with the fuel scarcity. And then before we get into the topic for today, personally, I paid more just last week um, while trying to find my way around the city. I paid more um, on transportation. Thankfully, there was some extra cash with me. If not, I like to place a budget on how to move. So what, what was your experience with transportation and trying to buy and, you know, do transportation? transactions last week uh, well it wasn't funny at all it was not a very palatable experience um, on the island now the queues are so long people are started selling in jerry cans you pay as much as five thousand naira for 10 liters of fuel, oh. and if you are in a hurry or you are desperate you have no choice and especially if you have spent how many hours on the queue and you really need to do something and again, when especially also when you consider the time, uh, the time, the cost of the time you are using trying to get for. Okay. So what do we do? The scarcity is there. It's been terrible. Okay, but there's an update this morning that um, the bad fuel, that's the shortage, would last till the end of this month. This is coming from the operators. Now this is the 21st of February. Thankfully, February is. 28 days, not 31 days. So uh, let's talk about the economic effects of this shortage, if indeed it lasts till the end of February. Hmm. Um, if I you may spare me two minutes, let me just try and paint a picture of what the effect is. Number one, Nigeria is a, Nigeria 90% of transactions Sorry, 70% of transactions in the country is done by road, as a movement, sorry, is done by road. Okay. And now, the major part of imports of products, over 90% of imports in this country is legal. Yeah. And then, you move them by road, majorly, to the east, mm -hmm. to the north. Mm -hmm. And all these vehicles require fuel. Then, the food basket is in the country is in the north. And major consumption is here in the west. These things are moved by road. The average Nigerian is a hustler. They are on the road morning to evening, moving up and down, either to meet customers or to chase transactions. Mm -hmm. All these are done by road because the alternative means of transport are not even available. And even those available, like aviation fuel now, has gone up over 100%. Too. Yeah. And so that makes it very expensive. Just like fuel, at least that one is available anyway. Unlike fuel, that is not even available and they're not just being very expensive. Mm. So it is crippling the economy. By the end of this month, by the time the inflation index comes out, there is every probability that would have risen by at least 30%, if not more. And then so a lot of people would have gone below the poverty line. Why? Because now people are going to spend like three months expense this month. Mm. So they will not recover to three months from now from this situation if mm. it remains like this the end of the month. Okay. It will take three months for people to recover. Mm. When, when you mentioned um, the food, when you mentioned the imports and exports, I, I just wanted, I want, I wanted us to give it a deeper understanding. So we now, we, we receive more than we export. We import more than we export as it is presently now if as a nation we're trying to look for alternative ways to handle this matter because looking at it, it looks like well is um the foundation of all our businesses all our transactions are there things that we can do to be able to cut down our dependency on fuel on the use of you know petrol are there, what can we do to cut down our dependency on the use of petrol so that it does not affect all areas of business? And well, first of all, on a personal level, you could decide to move to, instead of you driving um, petrol cars, you could move to driving diesel powered cars or gas powered cars, which are available in the country. Okay. Um, so as to remove that dependency. But the challenge with either of these 
is the fact that they are still also imported and they are priced at like now we are supposed to be rejoicing in the country that the cost of um, the barrel of crude oil has gone up. Mm. But we are crying instead because we are importing our own crude oil. Mm. And so at the end of the day, um, at hundred dollars a barrel means if there was full the regulation, petrol will be going at the price of regulation fuel, which is about four hundred and twenty nine mm. So but number one, number number two, we can make a lot of uh, our business transactions and meetings online. So putting them online means that uh, you travel less, you move around less. Mm -hmm. But what's the challenge? There's a downside to it. Okay. For things to be online means we must have power. And in the last two months, power has been extremely epileptic. I was going to it's come so to terrible. I was going to yes. even come to that to say that to if you are saying that we should move all our transactions and some most of our transactions online, I um you know there are some things that might not be done online and it might be limited to those living in cities. How about the rural dwellers? You mentioned the food baskets in yes, yes located in the north. How do they deal with moving food you know even if we say we should move our food we may not we may not be able to move entirely move our food items online you know and the the markets these days now some um i think a bucket of crayfish was about three thousand five hundred now it's five thousand naira before the fuel issue happened yeah. so how do you see the rural dwellers i understand the online meetings and i'm in for that but how do those who are moving our food now deal with the petrol the cost of petrol for well, our rural dwellers is an uncontrollable situation because let's leave petrol. Let's even assume they decide to come together and move more bulk. Okay. Moving more bulk products means that they will move from petrol vehicles to diesel-powered vehicles. Mm -hmm. But that does not solve the problem. Why? Diesel has doubled. Diesel was less than 300 naira just December. Mm -hmm. Today it's over 400 naira. So automatically, if that's the price, the transporters will also add, uh, increase their own prices. Once they increase their price, the cost of goods, food, when it gets here, mm. to when it moves into the hinterland, would automatically go up. Mm. So it's an uncontrollable situation. We just have to tighten our belt. If you used to eat three times a day, it's time you just eat it twice a day. Oh my! And then those in the villages, they don't have a choice because it is what it is. Mm. The only thing they can do is add the increase to their own price too, which mm. means we have to brace up for increase in inflation. Mm. by in the next coming two to three months. Okay, and last question. Now that I've heard about two to three months and maybe our viewers are planning to reorganize their budgets, what, that's, that's for maybe for household earners, for households. How about the government? What do you think the government can do to make it less severe for Nigerians to go through this period? Um... Sorry to say, but to me, government has not even done enough to start with. Before even asking of what extra do they need to do. We have a situation of bad fuel. Mm -hmm. I have some level of information that a lot of stations, NMPC has not come to evacuate the bad fuel that they have. So mm -hmm. even with the new fuel, where do they want to put it? They have to remove the bad fuel first. first. Mm -hmm. NMPC is said to have a blending plant, which would have made things easier. Just take the fuel from those stations blend it and resupply. It even minimizes the loss, but NMPC has not done that. So mm -hmm. there is a quagmire on ground that I don't even know how we want to go about it. So government, and then for me, by now, by now, the heads are supposed to have ruled because normally in, no, in the oil industry, safety is priority. Mm -hmm. So enough checks mm -hmm. would have been done mm -hmm. on the, the ship in Britain. So I've seen that this is not Nigerian standard for mm. why didn't why wasn't it done? Mm. And then on this for uh, this uh, dispatch to petrol stations, those ones too are supposed to have done their check mm. so that they see that this is not the standard that we can sell. Why wasn't it done? Mm. Why was it not done as far as I'm concerned? I Means it is now normal to forget about safety, just get the fuel and sell. Mm. And that's what this just opened up. That a lot of people are not doing their job. But they are collecting the kind of high money, all the commissions and everything that are being charged, and the average Nigerian is suffering. Mm. So government needs to sit up. Number one, the heads, the people that approved all this and 
let go of the safety, should all be let go as a message for the future that, look, this should not happen ever again. And this is what will happen if it happens again. Oh. Number one. Then number two, our refineries need to start working. Our refineries need to start. The money we are paying on subsidies would have built so many refineries. It's not rocket science. If the refineries are not working, there is no need of doing investigation or research. Privatize it, sell it, and move on. Government is not in the business of doing business. Government is an enabler. So create an enabling environment and take hands off these things so that, you know, the common man can run this thing and profit and government makes money from the tax. It's so simple. They did it successfully in the telecoms industry. Why is it rocket science to do it in every other industry? Because every other industry, it is because government is still choking their hands inside it. That is, they have their hands in the cookie jar. That's why the biscuit, the cookies inside the jar is tasting bitter. Mm. Wow. They, they need to take their hands off it. Mm. And that's what's happening in the oil industry. Fully deregulate, leave this thing, and let those that are doing it do it. So that when issues happen, like it's happening now, NNPC is their baby. So they have been sentimental in spanking the baby for doing wrong. Wow. Thank but you. But if sir. it was a normal whoever company mm -hmm. that went wrong now, mm -hmm. government would draw the big stick straight. Mm -hmm. But now they are playing, they are, you know, they are just uh, tapping the wrist, which is not what is, should be done. And then they are playing lip service to doing a proper job. Mm -hmm. They Thank shouldn't. You. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you, Ayamakim. I, I really hope we are able to get it all sorted out and Nigeria can move on from here. Thank you so much for joining us on the newspaper review this morning. Do have a great day ahead.